Hello, today I would like to discuss the Monty Hall problem and link it to uh, some questions about infinity. I'm going to restate the Monty Hall problem as the lady and the tiger problem, and that's the original form that I heard it. Uh, it's a story that I imagine might well go back centuries. I don't know. It's, um, I, it's a good question. I should have researched it before this video. I, I guess I was more interested in the math part of it than the history part of it, but uh, I'd be curious to know the history of the lady and the tiger par uh, puzzle. But a king captures a prisoner of war, and again, this is a, this is a slight variation on the Monty Hall problem, so bear with me. Uh, a king captures a prisoner of war and brings him into a room. And the prisoner of war uh, is, there are three doors, and he's told that behind one door is a lady, and behind... You can marry her for the rest of his life. And behind the other do two doors are tigers. He's going to get eaten. And if um, he's favored, then, you know, he gets the lady and he gets pardoned. Well, the, um, the, he picks, um, we're going to make it door number one, okay? He picks door number one, and then the lord of the chamberlains, uh, or whoever's the high, you know, I guess the viceroy or, or, um, whoever would be the high official, says, here's what I'm going to do. Now that you've chosen door number one, I'm going to open one of the other doors that definitely has the tiger behind it, but not enough that the tiger gets out, just enough you can see that it's the tiger. There'll still be bars. And then we'll let you choose again. Okay, so he does, and that door would be door number two. So door number two is now out of consideration. So the lady's either behind door number one or door number three. The question is, what's the smart move? Are we talking 50-50? Probability? What's the smart move here? Well, there's an actual answer and I'm about to give it, so if you will need to pause this video, uh, do so. But before, it, well, pause it. Okay, fine. All right. Think of it if it were 10 doors for a minute here, and he chose door number one, and then eight of the nine doors were to suddenly open. Now, that would be easy enough to, to figure out, right, uh, which would be his best bet. Because remember, it's not a purely random thing between, in that case, door number one and door number, let's say we have 10 doors. He chooses door number one, and then eight doors open and open with the tiger and he sees the tiger and then there's only door number 10 left. You can see very clearly that door number, that there's a weighted probability here with, with door number 10, that initially he had a nine, a, a one tenth chance it'd be door number one and then a nine tenths chance it would be e either two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10. But then with two through nine knocked out, you can see that it's a nine-tenths probability that the lady's behind door number 10. And you can see that very clearly. Now, if the viceroy had said, well, I'll open any door, potentially door number one, then, then that'd be purely random. Sure, it'd be 50-50. But it's not a purely random thing when he says, I'm not going to open door number one. I'll open one of the other doors that becomes, you can clearly see, a weighted probability. Now, with um, our initial, with, with the problem that we presented, though, with three doors, you kind of, it's a little counterintuitive. You have to make a sample space, uh, and I think you can. Well, assume that it's door number one um, that he chooses. We could uh, have sample spaces in which he chooses door number two or door number three, the problem is that that would just be repetitive. It wouldn't really uh, teach us anything. So door, our, on, our, on our first try here, he chooses door number one, and then either one of these could open. It wouldn't matter because the tiger would come out if he, if he, if he switched. We're considering the prob the, what would happen to him if he switched, okay? He chooses door number one, and then he switches to either door number two or, or door number three, but he gets eaten either way. But on our second try, if he chooses door number one, then door number three automatically opens, and when he switches, he's, he's okay, he's good. And then on our third try here, again, he chooses door number one, and then um, 
door number two opens, then he switches to door number three. He's good. So two out of the three times when he switches, he's he's good. Okay. Only one time out of the three times he switches is it is it something disastrous. So it's a two-thirds probability that he should switch. Now our minds want to say it's it's 50-50. You know, it's sort of interesting. One wonders when the human brain developed uh, so long ago um, and when all the selective and adaptive pressures, whether our willingness to believe in things that are counterintuitive didn't have to do with encountering situations like this where the counterintuitive is actually um, the correct choice. If you're a hunter then and you see an odd phenomenon, then you're going to want to have an open mind when approaching the the odd the odd phenomenon you're not necessarily going to want to have preconceived notions but that's neither here nor there you know you can make a counter argument that well maybe um we're too wedded to preconceived notions so it's you know it's an interesting philosophical problem there um but i'm not going there i'm going to go to a, a high high speculation beyond all of these things and I'm, and we're going to choose uh, the row number two here, and instead of three, instead of ten, we're going to have an infinite number of um, doors. Okay, so the lady in the hall, the, I'm sorry, the lady in the tiger problem, or the Monty Hall problem, is now going to be considered with an infinite number of doors. Well, it's pretty obvious that um, the reason I chose row number two is it's pretty obvious where this is going to work out if he chooses door number one and then an infinite number of doors open leaving only one door uh, between let's say two and, and infinity. What we're going to do is uh, he's going to choose door number one and then we're going to posit that um, every door opens after one save for one door. And we're going to make that door number two. Now, how we're going to do that is uh, we're going to say whatever door it is becomes our door number two. So, and then the other doors are moved over one. So, let's say it's door number 5,586. That becomes our door number two. It wouldn't be that either, okay? Uh, we wouldn't know what door it would be, but that's going to be our door number two. It's pretty obvious that given the weighted probability that the lady will be behind door number two. That's not really a question here. The question is, is it absolutely certain? Is it 100% certain that it will be door number two? Or is there ever so slight? In other words, can we say that there is zero probability that the lady would be behind door number one in that case? In other words, we have our Monty Hall problem, or our lady and our tiger problem. But we don't just have three doors, ten doors. We have an infinite number of doors. He chooses door number one. And all the doors to the right of door number one opens slightly to show the tiger save the one. Uh, the question is, is it now absolutely certain that he needs to switch? Not just almost 100% certain, but absolutely certain. Or let's put it the other way. Is it 0% is it probability that the lady's behind door number one? If we're really going to have an infinite number of doors here. And I think it's a, a fascinating question. Um, how I honestly don't have a good answer to it. I mean, I, linking probability and set theory is, you know, might just very well go beyond um, what we can really be certain about. What I would say uh, is that um, you can probably get out of the whole question by saying that you couldn't have an infinite number of, of doors. You could have, you could have infinity as a as a, spec, as a concept that's not linked to anything concrete in particular, but once you have an infinite number of doors, you'd have to have an infinite number of tigers, you'd have to have an infinite number of actual set physical objects, and that the impossibility of that might be a way out of having to consider the problem. But I think that what we could say is the more doors that we add to this, the more the probability of the lady be, being behind door number one tends to zero. I, I think we could argue that. But once you actually have a cardinality of uh, all if not, uh, then it becomes, in my mind, an open question. Maybe there's an actual mathematical proof out there that I just don't know about. If there is, uh, give a ring for it. If not, hey, you better switch, okay? Just remember, that that's the one thing you learned here. Thank you.